Over the years, just like you guys, I've spent countless hours playing wrestling games in my lifetime. From the first time I ever saw one of my older cousins play Smackdown Shut Your Mouth back in the day on PlayStation 2, I was instantly hooked. Growing up, even though I was lucky enough to play all sorts of games across so many different genres, wrestling video games though, were always the one consistent. The one genre of games that no matter how good or bad, no matter how old or new, I just had to play and had to check out. A few years ago we talked about the most overpowered characters in wrestling game history. We talked about how OP Lesnar and Goldberg were in Here Comes the Pain. We talked about how unfair Beat the Street Taker was in 2K14 and so on. But recently, I've been reminiscing about my favorite characters in wrestling game history. Characters who might not have been the best or the most overpowered but whether it was the animations, the entrance, the attire, the moveset, memories, whatever, a wrestler who for some reason in a particular game from that year, that version of the wrestler was just someone that I loved using. So I decided to go back and load up a bunch of wrestling games and relive some memories one more time and ladies and gentlemen I present to you my favorite characters in wrestling video game history and we begin with Smackdown Shut Your Mouth with who else but Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy in Shut Your Mouth was a demon. Not only did he have the coolest attires and the coolest entrance, not only did he have a special stance where he would jump around side to side and start doing his weird little dance out of nowhere, he was just so cracked out in this game. Jeff had such a fire moveset, he was so damn fast, and the things he could do with this idiot made no sense whatsoever. This game allowed you to jump off anything and everything, and nobody did it better than Jeff Hardy. Swanton bomb off the top of the ladder? Why not? Who cares if you miss? Just jump off the stage while you're at it. YOLO. Playing with Jeff and Shut Your Mouth was just special. The Swanton bomb animation was so fast and so fluid you press l1 and a second later your guy is already in the floor dying and breaking his neck and it was the same animation no matter where you did it from it was legit addicting to keep doing it over and over again and it didn't matter if you missed 99 percent of the time because every now and then you did hit it and that's all that mattered and the best part was you didn't even need a finisher you could just do the swanton bomb as a regular move if you really wanted to hurricane arana splashes twist of fate just everything about this version of jeff hardy was just perfect jeff was that guy in this game and what made it special for me was i didn't get my own copy of shut your mouth until 2004 and that was really the year where I started understanding wrestling and watching every weekend really became a fan. And I've mentioned this before, but growing up, Jeff Hardy was like an urban legend to me and my neighborhood. All my older cousins and older friends would always talk about Jeff Hardy like he was some next maniac, right? Like, he was some guy who would jump off ladders and do 360 no-scopes, basically. I would just hear the most outrageous stories of this suicidal, insane maniac. But I never got to see him wrestle because by the time I was watching every week, he was already gone. I actually thought he was dead at one point. But yeah, my head was just filled with all this crazy lore about this Jeff Hardy guy. So when I got my hand-me-down copy of Shut Your Mouth in 04, yo, when I saw Jeff Hardy was in the game, it was a wrap. My brothers, nobody in the history of the world jumped off more ladders and did more swanton bombs than Little Pav and back in 2004. I might have thought Jeff Hardy was dead back in the day, but he was more than alive on my PlayStation 2, and even as late as 2007, I would go back and play this game just to use Jeff Hardy. That's how special he was. To this day, the best Jeff Hardy in any wrestling game, I, I don't care. The best model, the best animations, the best moves. When I think of SmackDown Shut Your Mouth, I think of Jeff Hardy. Next up, here comes the pain. Here Comes the Pain had such an awesome roster, and everything was so damn detailed that you can make an argument for everyone on the roster for being the funnest to play with. But in a game where all my friends used to go off with Lesnar, Goldberg, and Triple H, my guy in this game was Hollywood Rock. I absolutely love The Rock and Here Comes the Pain. No video game since or before has captured any wrestler in my opinion better than The Rock in this game. First of all, he had that Hollywood entrance that I never skipped, but the way this character literally plays like a douchebag is amazing. <laughs> Yo, this character is so extra, so dramatic, such an asshole, it's perfect. It's The Rock in 2003 from the way he walks, the way he talks, the way he tries to talk I guess, his facial expressions, his taunts, the way he has a move where he literally slaps his opponent in the face, what a character. Even his pose on the menu screen before the match was a Hilarious. Guys, it was so satisfying playing with a rock in this game and beating my friends would always use Lesnar and Goldberg, all the OP characters. It was so satisfying making them look so dumb by using the rock and basically trolling them. Hit them with a Samoan drop and started clapping. Hit him with a DDT and the kip up. The clothesline and point to your head because you wanted to know you're smarter than them. Everything was just awesome. Not only did you have moves and animations that made your opponent look like an idiot, you had some powerful moves as well. The rock bottom looked so devastating, even the punches would have your opponent go flying. But my favorite thing, hands down, was hitting the people's elbow. They had this before too, but I loved it in this game. You do the people's elbow the first time and he throws one of his elbow pads, right? You do it the second time, he throws his other one. You do it a third time when you're basically about to guarantee the win, the camera just zooms into his face and boom, people's elbow. My favorite rock we've gotten in any wrestling game and, and honestly ever will. They will never be able to replicate how special this rock was. The attention to detail was just insane, just so fun to play with. I'll say it again, what a character. 
Moving on to SmackDown vs Raw 2006. So longtime fans of the channel would assume that this would be the game where I go off on John Cena and how awesome he was. How much I loved the entrance, the belt spinning, the five knuckle shuffle, all the moves, how Cena was basically my dad in 2006, all of that. But no. Sadly not. SV06 is a game that I love and adore, but when I think back to this game, it isn't Cena that I think about. In early 2006, before I was able to get my hands on SVR, my best friend at the time, my neighbor actually had the game first, and this guy was such a piece of shit that every time I went to his house to play this game, he had one rule, that no matter what, only he could ever use John Cena in this game. He said it was his game, his house, his controllers, his rules, only he could be John Cena. Yo, I swear to God, every time I went to his house, he would choose Cena, and it hurt me, bro, because this guy barely watched WWE. WWE. He barely watched wrestling. He barely knew anything about Cena. He was a fraud. But just because Cena was cool at the time and he knew I love Cena to spite me, he would choose Cena every single time. So every time I went over, I made it my mission. I made it my mission to find a wrestler that was so fun to play with that this bozo would get salty and then he would be the jealous one. And not only did I find one, I found two. First up, Rob Van Dam. I used to put in work with RVD and SVR06. Just like Jeff and Shut Your Mouth, I found RVD and it was a wrap. He had such a funky and fun moveset. He was so damn fast. He was so damn high. My so-called friend at the time had no idea what the hell was hitting him half of the time. I loved playing with RVD back in the day. Even at the time, it felt so unique and so different. He had such awesome animations. He had special moves with a chair and everything. And you could put together some crazy combos with the moves he had. RVD was definitely my guy in SVR06. And I know looking back, he was really fun to play with in a lot of games shut your mouth here comes the paint all that but for me it was 06 where he became my guy but you know who else was my guy in SVR 06 you know who else I used to beat my friend when he used to use John Cena you know who else used to make him look really really stupid the homie Eugene I am not lying when I say this, Eugene was a god in SmackDown vs Raw 06. After making my friend rage with RVD, he eventually banned me from using RVD and I was like, alright bet, okay that's how you want to play, I'll beat you with anyone, I'll beat you with Eugene. He thought it was all fun in games, I thought it was all fun in games. Yo, little did I know, Eugene was a monster in this game. Not only did he have the wildest and craziest taunts and animations, not only did he start twerking and basically sexually assaulting your opponent and doing whatever the hell this was, his moveset was unstoppable. Bro, look at this. Imagine you start a match against someone who's using Eugene and you're like, ah, this is all fun. And the first thing you see is this. What the hell is going on? Playing with Eugene was so fun. Whether it was my friends or my cousins or even the CPU, nobody would ever see this or, or anything coming. He had his own rock bottom, he had his own leg drop, his finisher was a stunner, and not even a normal stunner, because why would he have a normal stunner, but the one that you could do two stunners back to back with. Yo, it made no sense whatsoever. Eugene was unfair and it was just disrespectful. You thought my friend was pissed when I was using RVD? Imagine that idiot's little reaction when Eugene was literally pissing on him. <laughs> he had the most suspect moveset I have ever seen in a wrestling game honestly how is half of this stuff even allowed but i'm telling you to this day eugene is op he is so fun to play with his moveset is insane the cpu in 2024 to this day gets mad when you use eugene when i was recording footage for this video i literally made the cpu rage quit and get disqualified when using eugene two times back to back times i have never seen that happen in all my life playing wrestling games and like yo i can't even blame the cpu because like who wants this being done to them? One of the greatest movesets we've ever seen, H hilarious taunts, hilarious animations. Eugene, you were generational in SmackDown vs Raw 2006. W what a time it was to be alive. Moving on to SmackDown vs Raw 2008. SVR 08 well, overall was a pretty whatever game, I, I think we all agree on that. But one thing that could never be taken away from this game was the hype of Jeff Hardy being back for the first time since 2002. I still remember the day I got the game and the first match I played using Jeff Hardy, watching his entrance, shit, I was playing along, I was dancing in my living room, I had my shirt off, I was having the time of my life. Jeff Hardy was back and it was the greatest thing ever, it was so massive. This was genuinely the most anticipated thing about the entire game for me, I didn't care about features, I didn't care about story mode, I was just happy that my boy Jeff Hardy was back, and the hours I spent playing with Jeff in 08 probably will never be matched again. Was he as fun as Shut Your Mouth? No, not really, because they slowed down the game so much, but he still had a super similar move set. he could still do all the crazy things he wanted with them, the Swanton Bomb was so fun to hit, it, it was still Jeff Hardy, and it was still a blast, and he 100% belongs here just for how massive it was at the time to get him back. But another wrestler in 08 that I used to love to abuse for the first time ever was the Sandman. The Sandman at SVR 
away was a straight up gangster. Not only was little me amped to play with him every time because he made his entrance from the crowd, what, what can I say, I was easily impressed as a kid. Not only was it after you won your match, he would smash his head over and over again with a beer can, but this game's hardcore abilities were tailor made to play with this guy. Sandman first of all just looked like a beast. He had his parental advisory shirt, the pants, he came out with the little candlestick, but once you got into the match and he started clapping people, it was guaranteed fun every single time. From all the weapons abilities and the violence you can do to the fact that if you did end up getting your ass kicked, all you had to do was grab a chair and give yourself CTE, make yourself bleed and boom you get your finisher. It was everything. Sandman was just fun. Lighting weapons on fire, hurricane around us off the top row, breaking necks and legs and I know, I know, you could have done this stuff with a lot of wrestlers in this game to be honest. You could have done with Sabu, Dreamer, Foley, but it just fell right with this crackhead. I have these vivid memories of choosing Sandman and doing an extreme rules match and going into the match and just letting the CPU beat me up. I would literally let the CPU clap me, do all their moves to me, their finishers, and I would just wait. I would just wait for me to get busted wide open because once that happened, it was time to hulk up and go on a rampage. For little 9 and 10 year old me, that was the greatest thing ever. Sandman was the greatest thing ever. That's the thing. SBR away, yeah, it wasn't the best game, but Jeff Hardy and Sandman, they made that game for me. Great, great times. Moving on though, before I thought we'd get to the next character on my official list, this, I thought why not talk about some of my favorite characters of the mainstays in wrestling video games. The Undertaker is the wrestler who has appeared in the most wrestling games in history and I have two versions of Taker that I love. The first one, once again, from Shut Your Mouth. This one was based on his heel character from 2002 and this model just looked evil and he had some really cool and unique animations in this game just like everyone else but I used to just love doing the tombstone with him where halfway through he would do the thumbs down and just break your neck, shout out to Buster Rhymes but not only that, he had a cool choke slam that you didn't need a finisher for and of of course the last ride was pretty awesome but best of all he used to come out on his motorcycle and during the match anytime the Undertaker was involved you could ride his motorcycle. Just a great version of the Undertaker. And in terms of Dead Man Taker I gotta say Espira 2011 Undertaker. This Undertaker was a blast to play with, I don't know what it was. There had been some great takers in the years before this, SVR07 comes to mind, of course, he was always great to be honest, but for some reason SVR2011 Taker was just on one, probably because he was 98 overall, but beside that, it, he was just so fun to use, it was impossible to keep down, he looked so legit, I remember when you hit the tombstone for a brief second, he would actually roll his eyes at the back of his head in the middle of the move, he was just unstoppable, he had a great entrance, a great look, the attire, it wasn't just the fact that he was 98 overall, it was just something. This was just one year where they got Taker perfectly right. I used to tweak with him. Randy Orton is also someone who's been in like every single game for the past 22 years and for me my favorite version of Randy Orton it has to be Smackdown vs Raw 2010. See I loved using Randy in 09 because it was a debut of the punt and that was that was the time in my life where I was really getting into cheering the heels because I thought it was cool that was that phase but SVR 2010 Randy just had so much aura in this game. It was a debut of the new tattoos, he looked like a serial killer, he had the bald fade, the punt was there, and it looked so damn devastating. SVR 2010 was definitely the year of Randy Orton for me. But speaking of SVR 2011, back to my main list, it's time for a little bit of a deep cut, maybe someone you didn't expect. But my boy Batista from SVR 2011. I have such a soft spot in my heart for SVR 2011 Batista. By the time the game came out, Batista wasn't even in the company anymore, and maybe that's why I kept going back to him for the nostalgia, for the memories, but heel Batista, yeah, first of all, just look at him, stupid sexy Batista. He had that awesome spotlight heel entrance, which yes, I used to give to all my created wrestlers every single time, but once you get into the ring with this guy, it was just domination. He was so strong, so powerful, so many fun moves, he had such a great model, Batista bombs everywhere, just throwing opponents everywhere, destruction everywhere. It's a deep cut, but SVR 2011 Batista was my guy. And my favorite thing to do with him though was use a civilian clothes attire and just wreck havoc. <laughs> Yo, I found it so fun to pull up with Batista, who we all know back in the day was Swag Lord 5000, with his Abercrombie and Finch button up with little shades and just go off. Whether it was online or with my friends, it didn't matter. Sorry guys, the shades are gonna stay on during this assault. Alright, that sounds kind of illegal. But nah, it was amazing. You had Batista, his glasses were on, and you just dominate, and his glasses would never fall off. What a beast. Moving on to WE13, I think I speak for everyone when I say that this was the CM Punk game. Yeah, it was the Attitude Era game as well, but you had CM Punk on the cover, he had the white tee in the game, he had cult of personality for the first time. To me, this was a CM Punk game. This was a game where you just had to use CM Punk as much as possible. You just had to go off with him. They gave him tons of springboards, he had tons of cool moves, the catching GTS. I just remember 13 having a lot of good times with Mr. Punk, but obviously a great roster, not many wrong choices in this one. 
But this was a pivotal time in wrestling game history, in my opinion, because I feel like once 13 came and as the years went on, I feel like the individuality of the wrestlers in this series definitely started lacking. See, as time went on, I would have tons of fun, yeah, playing 2K14 and whatnot, right? But for the most part, a lot of the wrestlers, they all kind of started to feel the same from here on out. But I gotta say, as the years went on, one wrestler who I loved using in WWE 2K16 was Seth Rollins. Rollins was a blast to play with in 14 and 15 as well, but 16, this was his game. Coming off a crazy 2015 in real life, combined with the way faster gameplay 16 provided over 15, Seth Rollins in 16 was a real one. Springboards were awesome, the diving moves were crazy, Phoenix splash this, this splash that, just splashes everywhere, the curb stomp got ridiculous there and was so satisfying to hit. He was in my opinion no doubt the funnest wrestler to use in 2K16, and it definitely helps that even in real life, like he wrestles like a created wrestler, so he just translates so well into the modern day video games. And I wasn't really the biggest Seth Rollins fan, like I appreciate him in 2015, he was having a great run, no hate like that, but I've never been like, wow, Seth Rollins, that's my guy. But in this video game, I used to put in work. And to this day, even in 2K14, Rollins has constantly stayed one of the best wrestlers to use in terms of fun. He just has all these animations that make him unique, and at a time where a lot of wrestlers kind of feel all the same, Rollins has always been fun to play with. But to end off the list with WWE 2K17, I think this one was pretty obvious. I think everyone looked forward to and just loved using AJ Styles in 2K17. Playing with a real AJ Styles in a WWE game was surreal. After a decade plus of using created wrestlers, after even creating my own AJ Styles as a kid back in the day, after only using him in the TNA video game from 2008, AJ Styles in a WWE game, like, like I said, it was just surreal and it actually lived up to the hype. It felt like AJ Styles it played like AJ Styles, he moved like AJ, he had such a deep moveset, and it was just so satisfying playing with him. Shout out to AJ Styles in 2K17, like, this was actually a massive moment, and he was just so fun to play with. But yeah, as the years went on, like I said, the individuality of the characters kind of died down. But lately, for the past few years, some of it, you know, kind of come back. Characters just felt more unique back in the day, so you could get attached to them more. You could, they felt so different from game to game, and that's because the games also felt different game to game. Nowadays, all the games are kind of the same, so obviously, Gunter in 2K22 is going to play the same as 24. The only difference was in 22, his name was Walter. But that's beside the point. You can still have your guys, you can still have fun with many characters. But I had a blast going back in playing with all the characters from back in my day. I had a blast going back and playing with Jeff Hardy and Shut Your Mouth, The Rock and Here Comes the Pain and so on. Those wrestlers to me just hit different and they have so many memories attached to them. To this day I find it hilarious how I ended up using RVD and Eugene just because my boy at the time didn't let me use Cena and if it wasn't for that I probably never would have discovered how funny Eugene was in that game. But yeah I had a blast going back and these were my guys and in the comments down below let me know who were your guys or girls who were your favorite characters and versions of wrestlers on specific games who for some reason you just loved using in that particular game. Let me know any memories you have down below. I can't wait to read them. I can't wait to find the one guy who used to kill his friends with a druid in SVR 2011 or the one guy who used Mohamed Hassan in SVR 06. I know you're out there. But yeah, feel free to share down below and let me know. I know this was kind of a different video from what you guys are used to, but I still hope you guys enjoyed it, especially if you're still watching now, like 18 minutes into it. A lot of personal stories in here, so hopefully you still had a good time. Once again, comment down below. Can't wait to hear about all your stories, but I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you for the support. Thank you for watching all these videos all these years later. I'll see you guys with the next one real quick. Till then though, take it easy guys. I'll see you guys very soon, okay? Later.